بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم احمد ہوں و صلی اللہ رسول الکریم اما بعد سو ٹوڈے آئی ول شیئر سم امپورٹنٹ اسٹف آئی ہیڈ اے ویری لانگ کانورسیشن ود اے اسکالر ان دا ریجن ویئر دا کانفلکٹ از ہیپننگ بٹوین یوکرین اینڈ رشا ایز اب ناؤ آئی ایم ناٹ گن مینشن ہز نیم اور اینی تھنگ بٹ وی می این ہیم ہیڈ اے ویری لانگ کانورسیشن آئی تھنک اٹ واز آلموسٹ ٹو آورس In the two-hour conversation, because he's a scholar, we discussed many, many issues. And one of the issues that we discussed was the internal conflicts between the Muslims within that region, especially because of this conflict. We also discussed uh, uh, issues of Ya'juj and Ma'juj and the Orthodox Christians and all of the issues that uh, I've been discussing. And but because he's on the ground, he's able to see the situation, especially one of the uh, conversations was about the Chechen groups uh, that are fighting because they're uh, Muslims fighting on both sides, on the Ukraine side and Muslims are fighting on the Russian side. And uh, there's a long history behind this. And so for those of you uh, that can, I would like to, and if you know people in the Balkans to forward this video especially to them i'm going to talk about this in more detail inshallah ta'ala as we um, move forward because i want to give the quranic guidance in this situation with that i also want to share with you uh, one of my teachers uh, dr irfan khan i think i studied with him probably a little over a year maybe almost two years i think uh, i studied with him i used to go to his halaqas as you'll see inshallah and the reason i'm bringing him up is because One of the verses that he talks about uh, that he is on record that uh, has to do with the situation. Okay? So we're going to get to that, inshallah, in, in a little bit. But there are Muslims on both sides of the conflict. So at a very, in a very general perspective, Sutul Kahf also gives us guidance on what to do during times of war. And Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا All praises for Allah, the one who sent down upon his servant the book, meaning Quran. ولم يجعل له عوجا And he's put no crookedness in it. It's very clear in what it's saying. It's in the language people can understand. Its locution is very well understood. قَيِّمًا لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْهُ قَيِّمًا It's straight to the point. لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا To warn you of a severe punishment is the translation used here. The one I like to use is of a severe war. And I'm going to explain this in a second. بَأْسًا شَدِيد بَأْسًا شَدِيد means severe war. This is exactly the word used in Surah Al-Isra. Ibadan lana uli ba'sin shadid. I'll show you that in a second. But I'll also show you um, other places in the Quran where this word ba'sin shadid. So it is everything ranging from a situation of terrible punishment to a situation of war. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look, there's, there's, I'm not hiding anything. It's straight to the point. To warn you of a terrible punishment. From himself. Okay. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to give good tidings to the believers who do what? الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَةِ Those who do good deeds. Why? Because in times of war, one is prone to the most uh, worst of themselves. Particularly when it has to do with the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to give the good tidings to the believers themselves. الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who do good deeds. It's very hard to be good to those who have done you wrong in a time of war. And if you do good to the believers in the time of war, without giving yourself the excuse that this is He's not part of my tribe or he's not part of my sect of Islam or he's not part of my way of worshipping Allah even if there are problems in Aqidah and so on and so forth. But what? 
because times of war are coming and Muslims will be pitched against Muslims because Muslims are going to choose the wrong side. So Qayyiman, straight to the point. لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْ And I'm going to explain this word بَأْسًا شديد مِنْ لَدُنْهُ From himself. This is going to be from Allah, these events. There are, people think they're planning them. مَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ الله. You think you're planning them. When Allah doesn't want your plan to work, it doesn't work. And when Allah wants your plan to work, it works and becomes part of His plan. So everything is a part of Allah's plan. Even shaitan's plan is part of Allah's plan. قَيِّمًا لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدٌ Straight to the point, لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدٌ To warn you of a severe punishment. مِنْ لَدُنْهُ From himself. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And good tidings that in that difficult situation of war, which this Russia and Ukraine situation is just a microcosm of what is going to become global. I'm going to discuss this. Remember this word, بَأْسًا شَدِيدٌ Please. قَيِّمًا لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْهُ وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to give good tidings to the believers. الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ That for them, for those who do some righteous deeds, reformative deeds, they do the opposite of fasad. They have Muslims who have hurt them and others who have hurt them, but they act in good in accordance to the Kindness of the Prophet ﷺ. So, especially the Muslims in uh, Russia, the winning side, they are responsible for being good, especially to the Muslims on the losing side, Ukraine. Okay, this is your responsibility. So, General Ramadan, it is his responsibility to be extra, extra nice to who? To the people that he's conquering, number one, and especially, this is why Sultul Kahf talks about a just commander in chief, a just general, a just king, who goes and looks at the situations of the people and does and deals with them according to their situation. He, you know, it, it is the uh, the alliance of Shaitan that when he sees weak people, he takes advantage of that. So it is very important. قَيِّمًا لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْهُ وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ I know this is hard to do. So Allah says, أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجَرًا حَسَنًا For them is a beautiful reward. مَا كِثِينَ فِيهِ أَبَدًا In that Jannah you'll stay forever. You, you do some good in this world, even if someone has hurt you. Even if it was time of war, even if someone you loved was killed, and so on and so forth, don't justify the killing. This is one of the last advices of the Prophet. Don't revert to cutting off each other's neck after I leave, the Prophet said. So now we are in a situation where the Muslims were divided in Russia. In Russia, the population of Muslims is increasing. And on the one side, on the other side, some voices within Russia are talking about unifying with the Muslims. This is based upon, uh, I'll, I'll sh if I have time, I'll show you something interesting on this too. But the main point is Muslims fighting Muslims. Muslims have to be very careful and very gentle. If they're caught in a situation where they're pitched against each other, they have to be extra careful. So what are the teachings of the Qur'an? regarding this this is what i want to what is why I'm, you know what is this what is the explanation of two things number one the explanation of number two those who do good deeds in this situation of terrible punishment and in this situation of terrible war military military uh expansion or military intervention in this situation what does doing good deeds mean what does it mean to do good deeds in this situation so now this is what we're going to look at first let's look at the word ba'san shadid so you'll see the different meanings of the word ba's everything from stressful and difficult to uh, military might okay so basically times of war Okay, so for example, let's look at the ayah. 
So those who are sabirin in the times of ba'sa, in times of hardship, and when something evil has come upon them, and at the time of war, at the time of stress and war, this is the actual meaning of that, as you'll see. In the next ayah, Asa Allah an yukaffa ba'sa alladhina kafaru. Asa Allah, perhaps Allah will yukaffa. An yukaffa, Allah will stop, withhold the ba's, the might, the strength. Alladhina kafaru, Allah will hold back the power of the of the disbelievers. Okay? Wallahu ashaddu ba'san. Allah is more severe in, in, in ba's, in might and in power. Okay? And then uh, another important ayah, وَيُذِيقَ بَعْدَكُمْ بَعْسَ بَعْد And to make you taste the ba's, the, the, the violence, the military might and the violence of one to the other. Okay? So over here it means violence. Ba's means everything from a warlike situation, a situation of violence, a situation of war. Uh, and... This is why when Allah takes revenge on a nation, Allah calls it ba'suna. كَذَلِكَ كَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِيمْ حَتَّى ذَاقُوا بَعْسَنَا And this is, كَذَلِكَ كَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ And like this, the people who denied before, حَتَّى ذَاقُوا Until they tasted our punishment. Okay? Now, uh, let's look at, there are many verses, but uh, let's look at, uh, this is Surah Al-Isra, which is the twin Surah of Surah Surah Al-Kahf, which I'm going to talk about in more detail in another time. And we will raise against you our servants that will be of great military might. And then the next Surah again. And to warn you straight away of a severe punishment or a severe military might, like a nuclear war. So starting off with Russia and Ukraine, and at some point ending at its le highest level, which I will talk about at another time. So, uh, the word, قَالُوا نَحْنُ أُلُوا قُوَّةٍ وَأُلُوا بَعْسٍ شَدِيدٍ the soldiers of uh, Saba, they told her, Nahnu ulu quwwatin. We are a people of great strength. Wa uli ba'sin, wa ulu ba'sin shadid. And we are people of great military might. Okay? Uh, so the meaning of ulu ba'sin shadid, okay? Uh, the meaning of this verse, this ayah of the Quran that we're discussing. To warn you everything from a stressful, violent situation, from a situation of severe hardship, to a situation of great military uh, uh, interference. What are the believers expected to do in such a time, especially when they are, of course, pitched against each other. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ If you're truly believers, then the good tiding is yours. Because what you are to do in this situation, الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who do good deeds at this time, who show generosity to others at this time, who show mercy to the weak at this time. Because that's a big part of the surah. Remember, the man who had uh, the big the land and the person that was working under him, Right, and then you had what? You had uh, the tyrant who was threatening the Ashab al Kahf, right? Uh, you have Zulqarnain who is a just ruler, right? And like this, you have the the man uh, or the pirate who is breaking down the boats, for example. And I can give many other examples within the surah, but the point is that uh, what is uh, the good deeds? that you should be doing in such a situation, helping other people, and most importantly, if you're truly mu'mineen, how you deal with the other mu'mineen. Okay? Uh, rather than doing takfir, 
or saying they're they're you they're Ukrainian Muslims or they're this or they're that or they were funded by the Saudis and they fought against us or they're Sufis and they're this and they're that doesn't matter if he says la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that's it you now have to deal with Muslims that are on the other side of the conflict in a responsible manner so I want especially uh, people that have the ability to give this point to the Bal people in Balkans, the people in the Caucasus Mountains, and to the military of the Chechnyans. Okay, that the stronger power, especially, has to show kindness to the weaker power. This is a major theme within Sulkaf. Okay, and then now let's look at this from uh, another surah. That what is this good deeds that you have to do in a time of violence? Okay, so. One of my teachers that passed away, Dr. Irfan Khan, who, um, so I'm going to play this video. Uh, you'll see over here, I'm teaching a class until Dr. Irfan, our teacher, comes. And uh, line of respect that was drawn in the previous two surahs, which this surah starts with. So it says, in fact, Dr. Irfan is here now, so I will give him, inshallah. Obviously, I was much younger. I think this is like at least 15 years old, if not more. The, uh, the floor to talk in so, um, so we will just, uh, I had just mentioned some of the c common things between Sutul Fatha and Sutul Fatha. That Sutul Fatha deals with the external issues of the, or the people that are opposing Islam. Oh, wonderful. And you made me really happy, okay. And, you made me really happy, good connection. And, and uh, Sutul deals with more of the uh, issues of the believers and how to handle conflict from the inside. And the Sutul Fatha was dealing with how to deal with conflict from the forces that are opposing Islam. So this was one of my teachers, so please do du'a for him, he passed away. And uh, now I want to go to the real issue. Uh, his name is Dr. Irfan Khan. You can see his videos if you're willing to. Um, okay, so I want to start with this point, okay? And uh, let me actually bring up Sutul Hujrat uh, as we're discussing this, so this issue becomes clear. Okay. Um, so the verses we're going to look at, I'm going to explain ayah number six, and I'm going to let uh, Dr. Irfan explain the uh, ayah number nine, I think it is. Ya ayuhu ladhina amanu, O you people who believe. In ja'akum fasiqum bi naba'in fatabayyanu. If somebody, if some troublemaker brings you any news, let it be investigated. Now, what does that mean? That as soon as you hear something about another Muslim, especially, or any group for that matter, first investigate before you end up feeling guilty and hurting your morale. Okay? And so, investigate, especially if it has to do with Muslims. Okay? فَتَبَيَّنُوا Make it clear. أَن تُصْبِحُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ That you harm a people in ignorance. فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ And then you would feel uh, regretful over what you did, but it's too late. And now, what has happened? Now what has happened is the, the facade that was happening has now increased. Because now you did... And now they'll feel like doing it, and they're not investigating, you're not investigating, and so all sides are exasperating the situation, and the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, is breaking apart, and this is why, by the way, it was never allowed for Muslims to argue in front of the Prophet. It had devastating con consequences. I mean, I don't have time to go into this right now, but the most famous one is the... the the, the knowledge or the memory of Laylatul Qadr was taken away because of Muslims arguing. And so when Muslims argue, whether it's in chat rooms or, you know, Discord or Telegram or whatever we have, we argue with one another uh, as if, uh, you know, we all know 100%. We don't. Uh, not even uh, any, especially not me, but I try. And uh, anyway, the point is, 
first make it clear, is that what he really was intending to do? This is what really was meant. This is how they really didn't mean to harm you and so on and so forth. Lest you do something. And then what does Allah say? وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Know it that the Messenger of Allah is amongst you. You are hurting him when you are acting this way. Okay? That the Messenger is amongst you. Ayah number 9 is the ayah that I wanted to share with you as part of it explain expansion of the verse in Surah Al-Kahf, what to do when Muslims fight with each other in a time of military expedition or hardship and so on and so forth. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَطَلُوا فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا And if two groups of believers fight each other, right? Uh, what? فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Make islah between them. Okay? فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا حَتَّى تَبْغِيْ إلَى تَفِي إلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Okay, and if one group aggresses against the other, fight the aggressing group until it com complies with Allah's command. So now, this is going to be explained by my teacher. But the way I wanted to do it is that, uh, you know, sometimes he would ask everybody a question and then... If he got no answer, he would say, okay, Shaykh Umar, what do you think? And then I would answer, and so you'll see. But I also want you to look at his ikhlaq. I also want you to see that, uh, that how he corrects people, okay? His uh, character, okay? So now, let's go over there, inshallah. So how should we behave? Can anyone explain to me the eye number nine? Wait, wait. Ayah number nine is one of the most misunderstood ayah. He's saying this verse, in ta'ifatani min He's saying this verse is one of the most misunderstood verses of the Quran. Now he's going to explain. And let me explain to you how the misunderstood. Brother, can you explain it? Well, the story. What ayah number nine is saying? No, no, I don't want to study this. I want to study it without this thing. I want to study it in today's situation. Tell me, to tell me, yeah, if you see me in this ayah, then fine. So, what does the ayah number 9 is saying? This has to do with methodology. He's not interested as a methodology of the asbab al nuzul only. Okay, so he's trying to teach us that you can also get a different dimension of things only looking at the uh, without the asbab and nuzul, only looking at within the Quran how the ayahs are interlinked. Okay? Uh, so if there are two groups of believers, so then there's a third party that would make islah between them. What is islah? Uh, peace. Good. No, this is I mean. <laughs> I told you this is one of the m most misunderstood ayah. So, brother, uh, with due respect, brother, uh, <laughs> Sheikh Umar Bolo, this misunderstanding is, okay? Make peace between them, okay? <laughs> this is not what I am saying. Compromise, make it uh, two brothers are fighting, so make them compromise with them. No, that is not what this is. It's saying, it's saying that Islam, Islam is, is more, it means to. Okay, so, so, Islam here in this verse, it means to rectify, not to compromise. Rectify yourself. Two believers are fighting. Let one rect one of at least one of the two rectify themselves to be nice to the other so that some compromise can be read. Rectify. Manittaqa wa aslaha. Whoever had taqwa of Allah, which is what Sutul Hujat starts with. And then on top of that, then if you rectify yourself, you take the position of ihsan to be the better person. Two people are fighting, two groups are fighting. One of the groups has to take the position of Ihsan. Otherwise, each group will say, oh, the other group was hitting me. Especially if it's amongst the believers. So one group has to take the position of Ihsan in order to deal with the situation. One group has to make Islah. Islah in the sense of not just making peace and compromise, but acting 
in a better way, acting with ihsan. Okay? And so, uh, this is why uh, I'll, I'll, I, I was going to show you more of what uh, Dr. Irfan is saying, but Surah Al-Hujrat is about intercommunal, intercommunal, what? Surah Al-Hujrat is about intercommunal conflicts, calling those people, oh, those black people are this, and those uh, African Muslims are this, and those uh, Pakistani Muslims are this, and those Bangladeshi Muslims are this, and those Turkish Muslims are this, those Arab Muslims are this, this intercommunal, and that leads, especially now, if one community of Muslims is on one side, the other community is on the other side, and we are in someone else's war technically, even though it, 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 there may be more right on one side than the other, then how do you behave? How should the Ukrainian Muslims behave towards the Chechnyan Muslims? How should the Chechnyans behave rather than hating one another, which is what they're doing, especially the Chechnyans on both sides? Okay, we have... So they need to make ihsan to one another so that this situation rectify one another, themselves, rectify themselves, make islah. Okay? There's no third party that's going to come and make peace between you. There's only the chance of what? That you can rectify yourself. You can make ihsan so you can keep stop disturbing the Prophet ﷺ with fighting each other. Especially the uh, the 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 Chechen Muslims that are known to be part of the uh, Qadri Salsala, and uh, they have love the Prophet. So for your love of the Prophet, you should make ihsan. Okay, and that is this word adab and shadida, uliba sin shadida, sutul kahf, and immin qariyatin. There will be no city. Illa nahnu muhlikuha, two Muslim cities in two different countries or two Muslim cities, in which people already have negative feelings about each other. Muslims in Russia versus Muslims in Ukraine versus Muslims in Turkey. So now you're in a situation where one group of Muslims is very likely to hurt another group of Muslims. وَإِمِّنْ قَرْيَةٍ نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُهَا There will be no city except we will destroy it قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Before the Day of Judgment. أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا We will punish it. عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا With a severe punishment. So the Muslims that are living in Lahore, if they already have ill feelings to Muslims that are living in Sindh, for example, and Karachi is in difficulty and Lahore is in difficulty, for example, or two different Muslim cities are in difficulty and they already had biases against one another. Now, as you are living in the city, and it clashes between the cities can happen very easily, especially if some mafia group is made so on and so forth, okay? So, إِمِّنْ قَرْيَةٍ نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا That is written in a book. So, look, it is very, very important that Muslims in Ukraine, and especially Muslims of Chechnya in the side of Russia, that they are show kindness to the people that are of less power. And the people that are weak, they need to swallow their pride and try to act in as if they would be acting if Prophet Muhammad was there sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know it that the messenger is amongst you okay and so you have to act and behave in a certain way and of course uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching that what you're doing to the ummah of, uh, to, the, to, the, to the dreams of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam okay so you have to behave in a certain way Especially when there's intercommunal conflicts. Now, if one group of Chechnians feel another group of Chechnians, they betrayed us because they made uh, peace with the Russian government, or the Russian government installed somebody uh, and uh, and and then forced a, you know kind of like a, a dictatorship upon the Chechnian Muslims and. You were in the first and the second conflict, and your families were hurt, and now you're on going to Ukraine to fight against Muslims in Chechnya, uh, Muslims that are on the side of Russia. Both sides, if they're hurting each other and not trying to be nice, both sides are doing haram. Nothing justifies it. You cannot say one side is the betrayer, and therefore I'm going to kill a Muslim. You cannot do that. Okay. If there was a true khilafa, then the khilafa would on its court system decide. 
But as long as there's no third party to enforce with power between two groups that are in, have an intercommunal issue with each other until there's no third party, you have to show islah. You have to show restraint. You have to show kindness. You have you cannot go and kill another Muslim brother. And I'm sorry to say, but these situations are only going to increase because Muslims are going to take different sides and different Muslim nations are going to take different sides. And we will always be in a situation where we're going to be faced, Muslims will be faced with one another. And this is one of the prophecies of the Prophet ﷺ. So the question is how to deal with one another. Okay, the Prophet, and even the Prophet goes to the extent of someone comes into your house, like a military person, don't fight. And if you're the weaker person, don't fight. Because it's better to, if he does kill you, to take let him take all your sins. If he's the transgressor. And don't fight because if he's the stronger one and he wants to show you kindness or some uh, level of compassion, then he's able to, especially amongst Muslims. So this is extremely important. So uh, if you can, I'll have my email come to Itikaf in Ramadan with us. Uh, and also if you want to support our projects, uh, I was talking to the brother, I was telling you earlier that I was talking about uh, getting some of the stuff translated into Russian language. The brother thought that would be, uh, he thought he thought it's important. If you're willing to support my projects, please also uh, consider going to the comment section and uh, helping us out with our um, funds. A lot of people say, oh, you know, Sheikh Omar, why are you asking for funds? Look, the kuffar, they spend so much for Islam. And they don't ask, they, they say, yeah, this is a cost. I can't, I'm one person. I'm a family of seven people. I can't <laughs> put funds into everything, you know. Uh, if you want the rewards from Allah, then you do it for yourself. Don't do it for me. Me, It's uh, Whatever Allah's work is, it's going to happen, regardless of uh, me putting a link or not putting a link, so on and so forth. But we have a lot of great projects, a lot of great brothers that are around me. We want to do certain projects. Of course, we wish to do those projects. I don't know what Allah wishes. If your heart tells you to help us, help us. If your heart, if you don't have the funds, then you do dua for us. And sometimes that dua is worth so much more. And if Allah gives you the ability to give, then give. And if you don't feel like giving, you don't have to give. And so, inshallah ta'ala, uh, this is, there's definitely Muslims fighting on both sides. And Muslims who hate each other on both sides. And who have justified fighting each other on both sides. And so this is why it's so important that this subject should have been discussed today, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.